Why are our governments doing this? Now, our guest, folks have wanted him on for years. I don't know why it's taken so long because I've read several of his books. Dr. Bill Warner has been a physicist, a businessman, and professor. And I'm not going to go over his whole the background, but he is now the director of the Center for the Study of Political Islam. And I've read some of his books, seen some of his talks. It's dead on from just my mainline study of history. But it's not well known by the public. Now, he could go through a whole history treatise with us. You can go to his website and do that or read his books. But I'd like to just get the short and skinny of it, why he thinks the elite is doing this, are doing this, where it's going, who's really in control of Islam right now, why would our elites ally with the most radical form out of Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabi, uh, uh, you know, Sunni group, and how do we counter this and respond to it? Why is the left so in love with it? I mean, you get some college student might have raped a woman, Six months isn't enough. Okay, fine. But then you got Muslims murdering their wives here in the U.S. and, and they get light sentences because, oh, it's their culture. What's going on? Why is the establishment so in love with it? So it, it, there's a long history of it, but he argues there was no golden age. Like Lord Monckton says, there was some times when Islam, you know, was less destructive than some of the stuff in medieval Europe. Regardless, it's destructive now. And radical Islam is the new Islam or was the old Islam and is dominating Islam. So I think the debate is over. So what is the establishment going to do when there's more terror attacks in Europe and the West? Well, we know they're going to take our liberties, saying it's our fault that the Muslims attacked us. And so he joins us now via video Skype, politicalislam.com. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Warner. Glad to be here. Okay, we got about 30, 40 minutes here. Uh, try to educate folks, try to educate myself. Uh, give us the Dr. Bill Warner boil down. Well, first off, everything that Islam does is supremely logical if you understand their logic. And their logic is laid out in the Quran, and it's laid out also in the words of Muhammad. And once you understand who Muhammad is and who Allah is, everything makes sense. The reason it's so confusing is, you see, there's two different Muhammads and two different Qurans. So Islam is based on dualism. It's always got a nice, peaceful side and a jihad side. And this is due to the very nature of who Muhammad was. i give you a real brief summary of his life. He preached the religion for 15 year, 13 years in Mecca and converted 150 Arabs to Islam. They drove him out of Mecca because he brought in dissension. Sound familiar? And he went to Medina, where he became a jihadist and a politician. He had 100 acts of jihad in the last nine years of his life. Not 101, not 99, but 100. But when he died, every Muslim, every Arab was a Muslim. So here, what do we have? We have a peaceful preacher, Muhammad, and then we have a vicious jihadist. But who was successful? It was the jihad that was successful, and it was the politics that was successful. So this dualistic nature of Muhammad, is reflected in the Quran, and so this is why you hear people say, oh no, Islam is the religion of peace. Well, yes it is, but it's the politics of jihad. So this dualism allows Islam to always come off exactly how it needs to be. Nice for the nice people, and not nice for the not nice people. So that's sort of the, the, the doctrine is at the basis of the confusion. Fundamentally deceptive. Uh, break it down yes. for us more. Yes. As a matter of fact, there are many uh, hadith, which advocate deception. Who will kill Ashraf, who has offended Allah and his prophet? This is a hadith. I will, Muhammad, but I will need to deceive him. May I do so? Yes, deceive him. And these are the words of Muhammad, so these are doctrinal words. There are 12 verses in the Quran which say that a Muslim is never the true friend of a kafir. I'm a kafir, and I suspect you are too. So here we have, you can be friendly but you're not actually a friend. So this is, once again, the threat of deception. But it also explains why we see that we have vicious jihadists, and then we have Ahmed, who works down at the fruit market, is a nice kind of guy. Which one's the real Muslim? Yes, they're both real Muslims. You've got the floor. Okay. So now why is all this so hard to understand? Because what has happened is, is that our intellectual class, the universities, have decided to abandon reason and instead become politically correct. One of the greatest tragedies we have in our culture today is the fact that, well, let me give you an example. I gave a talk in North Carolina, and a president of a local community college said, this man is unbalanced, maybe, but he should never be allowed to speak. 
what do we have here? We have the president of a college saying that ideas should not be debated, but instead should just be suppressed. So this is what our root problem is, is we're giving up what is the cornerstone of our civilization, which is critical thought. I mean, Alex, once we throw our critical thought out and we have nothing in the world but ideological propaganda, we're already in the sluice. It's, uh, so our big problem is, is we've given up rational thought. But my guess, this is no news to you. And all over the world, they are banning so-called liberal democracies like Germany, even criticizing open borders, are saying mild things about controlling. So at a certain point, I agree that the, the politically correct are ignorant at the grassroots level. But above it, there's a more sinister plan. Well, I think that power, everyone loves power. And the, the left has certainly taken over the universities and also uh, the media. But now, you know, I don't just blame the left for taking over. I also blame the conservatives for having given up. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a very religious town and, and fairly conservative, although not as much as the surrounding states. And there is no real cry for the ending of censorship. That is, the conservatives are not raising enough hell, Alex, just to put it bluntly, nor are the Christians. We're all being a little too nice. The cancer of nice is killing us, man. Well, you look at the PNAC documents that are from so-called conservatives uh, and Dick Cheney and others write about, we need a big Pearl Harbor event, catalyzing event, and then we can go in and you know, basically have a clash of civilizations and control the grand chessboard that's actually a Zbigniew Brzezinski idea of occupying the Middle East, not to reform it, but to then control uh, the crossroads of Europe and Asia and control Russia and China. Uh, but regardless, they've only started up and are now allied with the more radical elements how does Saudi Arabia feed into all this? Interesting question. Let me give you an example. You've heard of Chechnya? Yes. Well, the Chechen uh, uh, is, uh, jihadists are the most vicious. They are the supreme jihadists. Now then, you need to understand that Chechnya used to be a Sufi-based kind of Islam. That is, singing, dancing, uh, sort of the loving side of Islam. Well, Islam came in in the form of Wahhabism and with Islamic money, in particular Saudi money, and now then the Chechens have become vicious jihadists. The effect is this effect is being seen in places like Malaysia, where Saudi Arabia used it moved into. In Malaysia, you had a Hindu form of Islam. That is, there was a Hindu culture there, and the Islam had not penetrated down to destroy all the Hinduism. But now then, with Wahhabi money coming in, will we we see now in Arabia? I mean, I'm sorry, in Malaysia the rise of a more vicious kind of Islam. So what is happening is, is that the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia have infinite sums of money. You must surely know that uh, Saudi Arabia is spending more money to Islamicize the world. 80% of the mosques in America are built by the Saudis. than the Soviet Union did, did at the height of the Cold War. So we're in a war with a militarized system that uses a religion uh, as its cult control system and it is proselytizing and radicalizing all their forms of Islam around the world and successfully taking over all the way down into Central Africa and Western Africa and Eastern Africa, all the way as far east as Indonesia. Uh, I mean, this, this is massive with our own governments bringing them in in mass. Oh, well, I don't think our government is resisting Islam anything at all. As a person who speaks to the subject of Islam, let me tell you what happens to those who do. I'm called a racist, a bigot, a hater, an Islamophobe. You're probably called the same thing. What's interesting about this verbiage is, is it never says, well, now, Bill, you know, when you say there's two different Muhammads, a religious preacher and a violent jihadist, you're wrong. No, 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 no. They say that I am a bad person because I bring these facts up. So once again, we've lost the ability to reason together. Sure, you're not supposed to quote Muhammad, who within, you know, his life took over an entire region. And then within 100 years of his death, I mean, let's go over some of the history uh, when we come back from break here of the expansion of Islam. Because we hear it's this religion of peace. The Pope has come out and said that he's very troubled about saying Europe's Christian, uh, that he, what's the word, abhors it? What's the exact word? He dreads the Christian nature of Europe. I mean, wow, you know, is the new Pope, is, is he actually an ambassador uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia now? Well... I'm afraid uh, the Pope does not seem to demonstrate any knowledge of Islam. He may have some, but he certainly doesn't demonstrate it. He just attended a meeting with a grand imam from Al-Azhar University, and the two of them came out with 
We're going to have, we're going to give peace a chance. You can just hear John Lennon in the background. And that the true nature of Islam has is all about peace. And so they're going to... When it was Islam that destroyed the last Christian seat uh, of the old world in Constantinople, folks may have heard of it. It's now called Istanbul. We'll be back. There's a lot of different university maps out there, but you can just Google Islam Today, map of the world. Or you can also look at a group of maps, uh, you know, Islam over time and it spread. And Europe almost collapsed. But when you go to college, you're taught that Europe invaded, and, and there's all these movies made by Hollywood where Europe invaded the Middle East for no reason. They were bad and they were horrible. Look, Europe did all sorts of barbarous stuff, but this is the place where the Renaissance came from. Everybody wants to come here because we created the modern world. And I see it as a form of cuckolding or suicide of the West to just bring in the most radical of these people and then say we have to submit to them. We're talking to Dr. Bill Warner of politicalislam.com, highly requested. Uh, obviously, and I've read some of his books, seen his work. It's all spot on from my research, but he just lays it all out and gets demonized for it. This is a fact. So let's talk about the history of it some, sir. And this is a short segment, long segment coming up. The boil down of uh, how it's expanded and, and where you see it going. Well, the expansion started with Muhammad. Remember, he was in Mecca, then he went to Medina. This movement from Mecca to Medina is called the Hijra. That is the migration. The Islamic calendar is based upon the Hijra. Why? Because it was migration that brought Islam its success. Now, fast forward 1,400 years and what's happening in Europe. We have a new Hijra. We have a new migration. And it's important to know that Hijra is a form of jihad. Now then, I don't doubt but what there's some of these so-called, quote, Syrian refugees who are actually economic migrants, and they're not jihadists. But nevertheless, we do have to understand that Islam has a doctrine of jihad that is based upon migration. And uh, as soon as Muhammad died, Islam started bursting out of the Middle East, took over the Middle East. And let's, let's stop right here and deal with the question. The, the Crusades, as we're taught in the West, is they were an evil act by cr evil Christians who were going to invade the pure land of Islam, the Middle East, and do bad things. Hello? Before Muhammad, the Middle East was Christian. It was Islam that invaded the Christian lands of the Middle East, not the European knights of the Crusades. So I somehow know that we've managed to get all of this history turned inside out. But it was the case that the Crusades were a defensive move trying to reclaim the Middle East for Christians. Now, it succeeded only a part, but nevertheless, its intent was reestablishing what was originally there in the Middle East anyway, which was a Christian uh, nation, or a series of nations. I mean, Iraq used to be Christian. North Africa was Christian. Egypt was Christian. Turkey was Christian. Even Persia was half Christian. But this has all gone under the jihad and the migration of Islam. So I think we need to reacquaint ourselves with our history. And when I say our history, I'm saying that the history of Europe is also the same as the history of the United States, and even in a strange way, the history of Japan and others. Because I'm talking about a meta-civilization here, not just a European civilization, but a civilization based on two critical points. One, the ethical principle of the golden rule, or unitary ethics, and the second is the intellectual principle of critical thought. Because that's what our civilization is based on, and it's not just ours, but others. It's important to know that, that Islam denies the golden rule because it doesn't have one. It creates kafirs and, and Muslims, which is not a unified view of humanity. So these are all some elements of history, which unfortunately seem to be lost upon our current scholars in the universities. And of course, we have this whole... Wahhabist system that was one of the most radical forms ever that from my research, correct me I'm wrong, was basically based on the slave trade and robbing caravans. And then that somehow got linked up with British intelligence in 1900. They gave it funding to make that the brand of Islam around the Middle East. What an insane program. And by the way, let me challenge you on the use of one word here. The Wahhabis are not extremist or radical. They are the original yes. then. You're saying they're the real deal. Oh, no, they're the real deal. They're the 24 karat. The same with Islamic State. Islamic so I'm using State. a politically correct Islam. term when I say radical Islam. The truth is, bona fide original jihad Islam. Died in the wool. Died in the wool. Orthodox. The yeah, orthodox. Exactly. Islamic State is pure orthodoxy. The Wahhabis are pure orthodoxy. 
everything they do and say, look, Islamic State goes through a lot of trouble. I read their material. They go through a lot of trouble to justify what they do. For instance, they were criticized for taking sex slaves. Islamic State says, hey, look at the data. Look at the information. Muhammad had sex slaves. All the companions of Muhammad, except for one, had sex slaves. The Quran gives the right for sex slaves, so don't criticize us for being bad Muslims. And then the left worships them. I do. The, the left is not the left. They're mentally ill demons. You know, it's really odd. I support equal rights for women and attack the Sharia attack on women's rights. And yet, because I support the equality of women and oppose the Sharia view of women, I'm called a bigot and a hater. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't support generally mutilating women and putting bags over their heads and keeping them as slaves and kidnapping five-year-old girls and trans-shipping them to be in snuff films, you're a bad person. We are going to have at least two hours of live coverage kicking off at 7 o'clock central of the big primaries happening out in the West. California, the big prize. We've got Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs out there reporting. We've got our other reporters at Bilderberg 2016 in Dresden, Germany. The admitted founder of the EU is a Bilderberg Group member, Peter Sutherland. He's the head of the EU and UN Migration and Borders Committees, both of them. And he's openly told the BBC and others, we want to get rid of the whiteness of Europe. It's inherently bad. Well, uh, if you said get rid of the blackness of Africa, that'd be in, 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 in inherently racist. But it's beyond that. The globalists aren't planning to get rid of everybody in the West. They're planning to just bring in incredible tyranny. But to do that first, they've got to bring in huge, uncompatible groups. And then we're all told, comply with them or the Muslims will blow you up. And I said clearly that's where this is going a few years ago. Now they're actually in the news saying, we can't allow Germans to march and say control our borders because that might make the immigrants upset. See, not because they care about the immigrants, they're playing everyone off against each other. And the globalists are so authoritarian and have deals with Saudi Arabia now, they think this is controllable. They're on power trips. They're delusional. Or maybe they don't care if we all fall to radical Islam, which is dominant Orthodox Islam in 50 years. I just know this. I have two daughters, and I have been at the Domain in North Austin now. I even have photos of it. We're going to do a report soon. Like I, just had a, I just talked about it. I had the memory, and I got physically, physically nauseous and and i was at barton creek mall i don't go to the mall very often and i'm telling you i guess that's the culture to be in the markets at night or whatever it was every turn was women with full outfits on full heads covered up the burkas not just the hajibs and these women are born into slavery these women are and some of them are under stockholm syndrome i mean they go along with it and it'll defend it and teach their kids to blow themselves up but Austin, you know, downtown, folks, it is crawling with Muslims in their full gear. And in the first waves, they're all oh, pro-West, westernized, all that's not now. Finishing up with our guests, I want to invite back for a full hour uh, in the near future. I really appreciate uh, the doctor coming on with us, his website. Everybody should check it out. It's politicalislam.com, Dr. Bill Warner. Summing this up in the next five, six minutes, is anything I'm saying wrong on those fronts? Where is it going? Where do you see it ending? I mean, Europe is premeditatedly doing this. Why? By the way, I was recently in, uh, well, it was a year or so ago, was in uh, Macedonia. And uh, I was throughout the entire Balkans, which was a uh, really uh, educational trip. And when I was in Macedonia, I saw all these new mosques being built. And they're being built by the Turks, the Neo-Ottomans. The Turks have moved in and set up schools. Now, one of the things they will do at these schools is, is if you as a Macedonian will become a Muslim and wear the garb, they will pay you each month a salary for wearing Islamic garb. This is a form of civilizational war, which is brilliant. Islam that's right. That's why MSNBC, CNN bombs you with women in hijabs on TV, bombs you with how liberal and the liberal magazines now, even women that the top liberals wear it. I could be a sex slave too, exactly. Uh, so that's it. This is to throw it in our face. By the way, the name of your show is the war we should be fighting. This war of bullets and bombs that Bush did and that Obama's done, that is not how to defeat Islam. This is an information war. This is a war of ideas, not bullets and bombs. Yes, sir. And I'm sorry for interrupting you. Get back into that in a moment, but you're just you're absolutely on target. They're flaunting it, flaunting it. I've been in London just filming a public building and Muslims run over, you don't film me. Like, I mean, they're very aggressive. <laughs> so 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 go back to this war, this uh, what they're doing. Well, the word jihad is not well understood. It does mean it does not mean holy war. 
there are four kinds of jihad. There's the jihad of the sword, that's like on 9-11, that's violence, murder, and killing. Then there's jihad of speech, jihad of writing, and ah, the jihad of money. The jihad of war is not our problem. The jihad of uh, murder, we can deal with that. We have professional cops, we have professional soldiers. The war that's killing us, Alex, is the, word, is the war of speech and writing. It is the war of ideas. Because what we're doing now is we're saying that if you have the right ideas, then you can be condemned as being a racist, hater, Islam. Clearly, we're religion. losing the war to Orthodox Islam. We're losing the info war. Yes, exactly. And why are we losing the info war? Because the people who should be fighting this information war, let me bring up, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a very religious town. You would think that the ministers in the churches would be all for bringing in uh, Christians who are persecuted in Africa and Middle East. But no, what do they do? They say, oh, we need the Syrian refugees. We'll show how much we love them. We're going to cure this whole problem with love. So here we have ministers who don't know the Crusades from anything else telling us how to deal with Islam. Again, I do not blame the Muslims and Islam for winning. I blame us for losing. You understand the, the different viewpoint I have here? Yes, sir, doctor. And, and let me be clear. I'm somebody that a lot of the Muslims send countless emails and phone calls going, he used to be our friend, you know, five, ten years ago. You exposed so much, and now you're against us. I'm not against anybody. But clearly, I didn't want to have the clash of civilizations. I didn't want to destabilize those regions. I didn't want to fund Saudi Arabia pushing Orthodox Islam that, that goes after everybody else, you know, like they're heretics and kills them or enslaves them. I'm a friend to humans. But when my governments are allied with a bunch of radicals that turn women into slaves, and they're telling me I've got to give up my speech, that's it. See, I'm in everybody having their rights. I'm Americana. I'm an Orthodox Americana 1776-er. I'm a classical true liberal in the vein of Thomas Jefferson. And, and when people come after my freedoms, it's over. And so don't worry, uh, Doc. You've been helping win the info war or start some beachheads, and now the info war is on the job. So we're, uh, we see what you're saying. You're dead on, and we're taking action. And, and I think more people are starting to wake up to this too, uh, aren't they? Tell you what, I, use very, I do very little work on the Internet. I'm an old man. I'm 75 years old. I read books. You may have been familiar with books in your past. Yes, sir. But my wife has taught me how to read on the Internet. She's my researcher. I basically live with an intelligence officer. She said, Bill, scan the article, read the comments. And what has happened, Alex, in the, since 9-11 is that we, when I say we, the knowledgeable, those who actually know something about Islam, are beginning to dominate the comments. Our leaders are more corrupt and represent us less and less every day. But the grassroots, let me assure you, is beginning to wake up. All you have to do is read the comments. It used to be the word like hadith or sunnah were never heard in the comments. Now then, it is, it's very common for people to quote Islamic doctrine, doctrine about the hijra, doctrine about jihad, doctrine about everything. So we are winning at the grassroots level. Where we're losing is at the top. That's right. But the but but the globalists know what when you start winning long term on the ground, that ends up going to the top of the pyramid later. That's why they're coming in with all these pushes for censorship, is because they know we're turning the tide. And by the way, Alex, out of all of the things in the Bill of Rights, the most important is freedom of speech. That's right. Because once you lose freedom of speech, all those others about religion, press. Uh, and Sharia right. law is, di I'm correct me if I'm wrong, diametrically opposed to the First Amendment because it says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or proving the exercise thereof. That's the first line. Under Sharia law, it is state-run religion. You got it. You know, one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the things when I first started learning about Islam was listening to Islamic leaders, and they, they would say jaw-dropping things, and they were like, you got to be kidding me, right? But one of, remember the man who wanted to build the mosque at where the World Trade Towers went on? He said the Sharia and the Constitution are, are exactly the same document, while the Sharia is just an earlier form of the United States Constitution. You look at him and you go, what? Because nothing could be more contrary to our Constitution than Sharia law. Sharia law says that women are not equal to men. Sharia law, by the way, also goes ahead to say that Muslims can have weapons, but not Kafirs, not unbelievers. So the. By the way, so speaking of Kafirs, let's talk about Islam a, a little bit and uh, its view of uh, black people. Because I don't know why so many black folks worship Islam, Muhammad Ali, you name it, when uh, there's some stuff I don't want to repeat in, in, in the Muslim documents. One of the great ironies is Muhammad Ali 
coming out and becoming a Muslim. Do you remember what his original name was? It was Cassius Clay. You knew Cassius Clay was? An abolitionist, a white abolitionist who wanted to get rid of slavery. And so he adopts the name Muhammad and Ali. Muhammad was a slaveholder. Muhammad was a slave trader. He tortured slaves. He had sex slaves. He captured people and made them slaves. The Every black man who came to America came through the hands of a Muslim trader in Africa. So here we have Muhammad Ali, who's now being praised as a really nice guy, but he did a very, his leadership was, for the black community, was disastrous. Because he wanted to say to them, oh, Christianity is the religion of the white man. Islam is the religion of the black man. Hello, are you sitting down, Alex? Because I'm getting ready to tell you something. Muhammad was called a white man in the Hadith. Which one is Muhammad? The white man leaning on his elbow. I saw the whiteness of Muhammad's belly on the day of the Battle of the Trench. The Hadith goes outside of its way to make sure to name the race of slaves and that Muhammad was white. So here we have, quote, Muhammad Ali bringing freedom to the black man in Europe by saying, no, we need to adopt the owner, we need to adopt the names of slave owners, Muhammad and Ali. Ali was Muhammad's uh, second cousin and brother-in-law. No, I got that wrong. Son-in-law. And he was also a slaveholder. So here we have poor Muhammad Ali thinking he's doing black folks a favor when instead he's sealing with silence the fact that every uh, Muhammad Ali's ancestors, Cassius Clay's ancestors, came through the hands of an Arab slave trader in Africa. So there's I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that Cassius Clay was a famous abolitionist. That's true. Imagine, yes. get rid of the name of a Christian abolitionist uh, and uh, <laughs> someone which died trying to free black people, and then yes. you go name yourself after two different slave owners. Yes. <laughs> I just can't make not that just up. Slave owners, not just slave owners, slave traders. We have on two different occasions Muhammad standing by while black. No, I know that's what went on in that part of the Middle East. That's 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 historical. That's that's in the Quran. I, I just can't. I, it, that's what I mean. I, I just they've had these leftist TV shows and movies made about me, where they just randomly have actors act like they're me or have other actors say, "I got my news from Alex Jones, a homophobe that hates n words and and who hates all the Muslims." And it's just like weird leftist. What's that guy's name that did Mr. Show and all that, the big comedian? And it's just funny to them to just put these lies out about us when I want everybody to be free. I don't want anybody to be slave. I don't hate anybody. By the way, let's deal with something here. I, if you're listening to me, now I have dealt with one Muslim, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, but I do not criticize him other than to say he's misled. What I talk about is Islam. I do very little or almost no talking about Muslims. That's right. We're I'm not biased. demonizing the individuals. We're demonizing what they claim to have an allegiance to. And by the way, what did I say about Muhammad Ali? He was misled. He was fooled. He was deceived. So <clears throat> we need to deal with the subject of Islam. Islam is the doctrine found in the Quran, the Sirah, and the Hadith. It's in three books. It's Allah and Muhammad. Unless you're dealing with Allah and Muhammad, you're not dealing with Islam. And so we do not need to bash Muslims. One of the ironic things is I'm called a Muslim basher. And it's like, no, I don't. I just tell you what Muhammad did and said. I do not even bash Muhammad. I simply say, here's what he did. Here's what he said. When I told you that story about Muhammad advising deceit, I didn't say that Muhammad was a bad man for doing that. I just said, he said, deceive him. So we don't need to bash people at all. As indeed, the first victim of Islam is the Muslim. And by the way, I've met many Muslims who know almost nothing about Islam. Oh, of course. Listen, I, I, I mean, I'll say it. I, just because of Muslim friends I had in high school and college, I was prejudiced almost towards not telling the truth because I thought these are such nice people. This couldn't be possible. Well, those are the doctors and the scientists, and a lot of them are heretics, I'd say, uh, not in their own oh. minds, you, you know, that tried to get away from Islam and be free. I mean, a lot of these folks aren't like secret jihadis sneaking in, climbing over the barbed wire to get us. But now you go to these poor, back, you know, trodden, falling apart Muslim countries, and they're bringing them in from here. These folks, just like you go into poor areas of the South, that's when you find all the trashy, stupid clans people. And it's the same thing. You get around, you get these really trashy, anti-human, anti-woman, orthodox Muslims, and they are just like from another planet. We interviewed one in Germany yesterday, my crew did. And he goes, I hate Germany, I hate these people, but everything's free and I'm staying. I'm jihading. 
And he's just this arrogant, like, out in the open, I'm going to get you guy. They're just so, uh, some of them are so honest about it. Well, actually, they are quite honest about it because they know this. They're not going to be attacked or harmed. That is, they can say all these things and still pick up their welfare check. So you know, they've, they've learned that they can do and say anything they want to do, and they'll get a free pass on it. Well, sir, I want to invite you back up in the near future for a full hour to and send me in like a uh, email with talking points. I don't normally do this with with a lot of guests, but so we kind of do an educational presentation with some slides, some of your books, your materials, and then do a whole hour where we go through say A to B, C to D, you know, all the way to Z, and because we're also TV, not just radio, so we can create an a educational video. Uh, on, on the 101 of what's happening. And is this a culture you want to live under? Because Orthodox Islam is always running around enslaving other Muslims and killing them to make them become more hardcore and more extreme. And so if you want to live under a bullying system where your wife and daughter can't drive cars, where their genitals are cut off, and where uh, women are executed if their husbands feel like it, uh, then you probably want to support Gloria Steinem because she supports these people. And by the way, the, even in the Islamic State, who is vicious, who is the most viciously attacked? Kafirs? No. The ones that are mostly killed are bad quality Muslims. They're Shia or there's someone who's not observant oh, enough. Oh, look at this headline. Every day at 17 this day, 200 and something that day, the latest 200 plus women have their heads cut off on video, Muslim women, because they refuse to become sex slaves. They have to make them, quote, agree to it because they weren't good Muslims. We'll put that on screen. I mean, what type of freakazoid garbage is this? Well, one of the things, here's the mark of a professional, Alex, and I think you've just illustrated the point. You can't make this stuff up. That's, that, that means you're a professional when you study Islam. Is that? And this is serious. Everyone who knows a lot about Islam, like the, th the fact you just quoted is like, what? What? How can you make this up? And you can't. 250 women in... Uh, and that's uh, just the one they pulled up from uh, a few months ago. There's another one today here in my stack somewhere. And then this was little little girls they were killing. I mean, I, mean, I read some story where 100 plus men raped a six-year-old till she died. What type of whacked out loon people are these? I mean, they're crazy. Well, I don't... Uh, that kind of suffering, it just disturbs me. But what also disturbs me is, where are the feminists on this issue? I want to know. They talk about a glass ceiling. They're busy attacking you. What? They're busy attacking you and I. I guess they are. But look, the suffering of women in the Middle East under Islam needs to be dealt with fairly. And if you're a real feminist, I think you would care for somebody who's being brutally, painfully tortured, even if they're not a member of America. So, I mean, look, I'm for women's rights for all women, and that's one of the objections I have to it. Absolutely. Well, listen, doctor, look forward to speaking to you again, politicalislam.com, Dr. Bill Warner. I take the gloves off for any form of tyranny, whether it be the New World Order, communism, uh, Orthodox Islam that is taking over whatever's left of Islam, and it's, it's, it's just all a plague on us all. It shows our ruling controllers are evil, absolute trash, or they're the most inept, morons the planet's ever seen. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be back with the big Tim Kennedy premiere. He talks about the Second Amendment more and why he's joining InfoWars.